Made possible through support from ARC Thrift Stores, CCDC Colorado Cross Disability Coalition, Developmental Pathways, PASCO Personal Assistance Services of Colorado, and the ARC of Aurora. A Think Change Training. Hey there, everyone. This is Petrie with the Arc of Aurora, bringing you another Think Change training. We are thrilled to be back with you. It looks a little bit different because we are all still working from home, but we want it to be a little bit outside the box so that we can still um, send you some of these VOD and podcasts. So our next series is actually going to be on planning for your child's natural transitions in schools. Um, and today we're specifically talking about early interventions. So Jeff, why don't you start us off? Okay, well, first things first, I'd like to define what early intervention is. So think about it this way. Uh, if you're a family with a child up to the age of three, you know, so we're talking about the infants, the toddlers, the little ones, uh, if they, if you feel they have any kind of delay in their development, or they have a qualifying diagnosis that is something where you're going to see a high probability of having delays, you're going to want to look at early intervention. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, okay, that's great, but where do I go for early intervention? Well, the answer is pretty simple. It's your local CCB, which also is called a community center board. Now here in uh, the lovely city of Aurora, we tend to use developmental pathways. However, there is also a nearby CCB for the city of Denver called Rocky Mountain Human Services. So either of those would be a great starting point to kind of initiate uh, the early intervention process. And when, when you're looking at initiating this, uh, you know, you could go to their websites. They both have websites. Recommend Human Services has a website. Developmental Pathways has a website. When you go on the website, there is an online referral form you can fill out. It's a simple form. You will have all the information that you need on the tip of your fingers. Um, now, you could also call if you're, if you're unsure or you don't have a computer. You can just call any of those organizations. Once again, Recommend Human Services. And developmental pathways and just say you know you would like an assessment for early intervention and, and they can walk you through the process um, who can refer uh, for early intervention well you as a parent or family member can certainly refer but also a medical professional doctor pediatrician they can also go ahead and make that referral so if you're really unsure I would reach out to your local art chapter and ask so Kelly now, I feel like I got us in the right direction, you know, to start the early intervention, but what, what else is there? I mean, what, can you tell me a little bit about maybe the assessments or like what areas are we looking at um, in development? Yeah, that's a great question, Jeff. I'm glad you asked. So the thing to keep in mind when we're looking at early intervention testing is that it's all what's called norm referenced. So that means, all of these different therapists, teachers, psychologists, medical professionals are going to be testing your child and they're going to be testing them according to what other children their age might be doing. So if your child is two years old, they're going to be testing them and comparing those scores to what other two-year-olds are doing. They're going to be looking at a lot of different areas, so it's good to know what they all are ahead of time. What are the areas? Yeah, that's a great question. So one of the biggest areas is speech. And a lot of people think speech is just verbal, but speech can be nonverbal. It can be body language. It can be what's called social communication. So how children relate to other children and get to know them and communicate their wants and needs. There's also physical, also called gross motor skills. So how your child works with their body in time and space, are they sitting up a certain way? Are they standing a certain way? Just think gross motor is what their body is doing. They'll also look at social emotional skills. This is really similar to speech, but it's not the exact same. Social emotional skills are how they're processing the social norms. So the way that 
you and I see each other in the morning and say, hey, how's it going? And we know to answer. That's a social emotional skill. So we're looking at, does the child understand what those social norms are and how to react to them? And then we're gonna look at what are called adaptive skills. These are also sometimes called ADLs, activities of daily living. Adaptive skills look at those day-to-day uh, -day tasks that we all complete, don't really think about, but for a lot of children, they take a little bit of effort. Like eating? Like eating, that's the one I was going to use. Jeff, you always know what I'm gonna say. Exactly, like eating, dressing, just those get ready in the morning, get ready throughout the day skills. And then last but not least, they're going to be assessing cognitive skills. And these are typically how your child learns and what they're taking in in terms of academic, I guess, book knowledge might be the best way to describe it, but those typical school skills we think of, addition, colors, patterns, those fall under cognitive skills. If you ever have any questions as well about what are you testing right now or how does that skill relate to speech, always feel free to ask. These therapists are experts and they're great at explaining why it's necessary and what the test means. So Kelly, just so parents can know what to expect, it sounds like um, the assessments are, are kind of being pulled from a few different areas. One, um, parental input, like what they observed in their own child, and then two, actual testing, and then three, maybe even observation of the people who are making the assessments. Is that right? You're 100% correct, Petrie. I'm so glad you brought that up. It's easy to think testing just looks like working with a child, yeah. but it can encompass a lot of different areas. Right. You can probably get a survey. That's wonderful. Your input is not only amazing, it's required. You know your child best, and so it's important to let parents know. They'll get a survey, and they should most definitely fill that out. Well, that's a lot of information, but the last thing I'm kind of curious about, and I'm going to ask Petrie this one, um, what should I expect out of early intervention? Yeah, that's a good question. So once you qualify, and some children don't qualify, but once you do know one way or another, the next step in that process, once you do qualify for early intervention, is you will be assigned a case manager who will help you um, organize all of your child's services. Um, okay. Those services will be based on the needs of your child, and those services will then also be used to kind of craft a plan to address the very specific needs of your kiddo. So I have a question, Petrie. Yeah. Um, you said it's based on their needs. So if I have a kid that has some needs in speech, okay, um, but I just want to, because I'm having these services, I just want to add some OT. Can I just tell them I want OT or? So they have to be qualified for the certain services, typically. Um, so it's not, um, it's not necessarily like, um, you know, a smorgasbord where you can just choose a little bit of this and choose a little bit of that and kind of make it what you want. Okay, so it's based on the assessments. Yeah, so it's based on the assessments. So they may qualify for speech and physical therapy, but for some reason they don't necessarily require social emotional support. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank so, you. and there's a variety of services that they can qualify. And we've touched on quite a few of them already, but physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, speech and language, there is um, availability for sign language or audiology supports, uh, developmental interventions, and then social emotional interventions as well. So it really kind of, um, you know, gives all of the options for anything that, you know, a kiddo of that age may be struggling with in the beginning. Um, and really kind of the, the goal of um, early intervention um, is to just kind of get you down the line um, towards moving into preschool. It's to really help monitor the progress of your kiddo as they're you know, working on their speech or OT or PT or a variety of those. Um, and then early intervention will also then help you and your child transition into preschool 
and kind of into that um, traditional school setting. Great. Yeah. Well, I certainly learned quite a bit about early intervention. I did too. Uh, anybody else have anything to add? I think, I hope that this is, you know, at least a good kind of snapshot of, of what the services are, how they're offered and what parents can expect. Yeah, no, I think, I think we got it. Um, and if anyone has some further questions or needs some deeper digging, I would just reach out to your local art chapter. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're here for. So that is it for this um, segment, but stay tuned. There will be more um, within all of these videos. You'll probably be taking tours of our homes because that's where we're working from, but we're really happy to still be with you and um, still kind of break in a little bit with some information. So thank you for your time. Look for more Think Change videos. And this is the Arc of Aurora team signing off. Think Change talks, trainings, and tools to help in your work for or with people with intellectual and other developmental disabilities. Learn more at www.thinkchange.training.